Hi, scientists. Today we're going to walk really quickly through um, making a graph in Excel, specifically to uh, look at the buffer data um, we're going to be collecting in Lab 1. So I'm going to share my screen here and go to Excel. So you can see here I've tested two solutions, banana goop and saliva. I've tested those two solutions with different volumes of uh, acid of the 1.1 molar HCl we're going to be using in lab. And just like we did in lab, um, I used zero microliters, 100 microliters, 200, 300, and 600 microliters. And so for each of these um, solutions, I've got a pH that was tested um, using pH strips after the addition of each of this much HCl. Um, so uh, the first thing I want to do is make a table about that. So with saliva, I'm going to look first at our beginning pH, there's 7.4. For the banana goop, our beginning pH was 7. The end pH for saliva up here do, 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 was 2.3. So I'm going to enter that in right here. And I've just made this little table up by typing it into Excel. Um, and for banana goop, our ending pH at the max addition of HCl is 6.7. Um, and now we want to look at how the pH changed. And this is just to be able to calculate um, the percent difference. The reason we're going to do a percent difference is because um, these two substances aren't starting at the same pH. And so we want to look at like the relative difference rather than the absolute difference with subtraction. So for the change in pH, we're going to say equals um, what it ended with minus what it started with. So how did it change? This one went down 5.1 pH points. Um, and in Excel, you can just drag down um, and that'll do the same thing. We can even check up here. C13, this is 13. C13 minus B13, that gives us negative 0.3 pH points. And then to do a percent difference here, all we can do is say equal to the change in pH over our starting pH. And again, I'm gonna drag down to calculate this one. Um, terrific. So by using these sort of calculations or a table like this, here I'm gonna put some uh, borders on this table. Can I do that without clicking too many buttons? I would like to put some borders on this table, all the borders right there. Um, this lets me sort of compare our two substances to figure out um, which one is a better buffer. And I think you can see in this case, banana goop is a way better buffer than saliva. That is the pH changed the least amount with the banana goop um, compared to the saliva where the pH changed quite a lot with the addition of that acid solution. Okay, um, so the next thing I'd like for us to do is to use this data, this table of values that you collected um, and use it to make a graph. Um, and so in order to do that, we actually have to sort of uh, transpose the data um, because this table is not the best way um, to format, to make a chart in Excel. So I am going to, on the left side here, say zero microliters, 100 microliters. I have to put the spaces in. Okay, 200 microliters, 300 microliters, 600 microliters of HCl that was added. And then up here we'll say banana goop. And here we'll say saliva. And then I'm actually gonna take my numbers from banana goop and copy them. And then here I'm gonna right click and paste special. Um, I wanna transpose the values. Bam, look at that. Um, and we can do that with the saliva group as well. Copy, right click and paste special, transpose. Um, all right, so this looks like a great way to um, graph the data. So I'm just gonna select the whole thing. Uh, and then we can go up to insert here and insert a chart. And I'd like this to be just a line graph. So I'm just gonna select this first line graph, okay? 
what it looks amazing first thing i'm going to do is get rid of this chart title because no scientific uh graphs ever have a title at the top delete it um but uh the next thing i want to do is format this graph to make it look the way i want it to um, right now the entire graph is selected and while that's the case i'm going to go back over here to the home screen and increase the font size because it's just too small Awesome, I like that way better. Um, okay, the next thing I want you to note is um, the Y axis here. The Y axis shows us how much each of these values is changing over time, but what are these values? Well, they're pH points. So let's put that in. Um, I'm gonna go back to chart design and over here on the left, we can add chart element. Axis titles, let's add the primary vertical axis. I want this to say um, pH of solution. That works great for me. Um, and then let's also add a primary horizontal axis. Um, this axis is gonna be called volume of 0 0.1 molar HCl added. It's a long title, but it's descriptive. Um, and then I don't love where this is located. Um, can I format this somehow so that the, the graph isn't, or the, this thing isn't over here. So I double clicked on this um, figure legend and let's see if we can move it to the right of the graph. Yeah, that's really nice. Um, it's actually not really nice. It makes the graph a horrible shape, but there, we'll just spread the graph out. Okay, um, next, I wanna look at this y-axis again. Um, if this is the pH, it doesn't make sense that the, that the scale of this graph goes from zero to eight, because we know that the scale of, um, of, a, of pH is from zero to 14. So let's, uh, let's like right click on that. And that's not what I wanna do. Click on this again. Chart design. Where does it go? Are you sure I can't just right click? Change chart type. Oh, let's format the axis. Let's do that. Format the axis. Great. And when we say that, um, it gives us the bounds of this y axis. The minimum is zero, the maximum is eight, but we want the maximum to be 14. Awesome goes up to 14, you can drag your graph down if you want to expand it a little bit. Um, but that looks like the type of graph that we wanna see. Um, if you're feeling really fancy, you could figure out ways to put like that this is a minus 4% change and this is a minus 69% change in the pH. But as it is, this graph does a great job summarizing uh, the data that you found in your experiment. So I hope this helps you think about how to share, um, analyze, and uh, summarize the data that you're looking at.